Namaste. I'm Dr. Sapna Dangya. I lead the breast cancer management team at the Apollo Proton Cancer Center at Chennai. Hereditary breast cancers are a group of cancers that occur because of genes that are inherited. And these constitute approximately 5 to 10% of all cancers. Those caused by the BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes have received the maximum attention. Today, my colleagues in the breast cancer management team discuss how patients at risk of hereditary breast cancers are screened, counseled and treated. Hi, I am Dr. Alec Correa, Consultant Medical Geneticist at Apollo Proton Cancer Center. To begin with, let's answer the question of what is hereditary breast cancer. This is a form of breast cancer that is caused due to alterations or variations in cancer predisposing genes with BRCA1 and BRCA2 being the most commonly implicated. Although only about 10% of individuals with breast cancer have a hereditary cancer syndrome, identifying these individuals is essential as it has important implications with regard to an individual's cancer treatment, future cancer risk, and risk to other family members. When an individual is referred for genetic evaluation, we review the patient's clinical history and investigation and pathology reports. Then we take a detailed family history spanning over three generations to understand the spectrum of cancers in the family and also to identify other family members who are possibly at risk. All this information taken together helps us assess whether the person is likely to be affected with a hereditary cancer syndrome or not. Genetic testing for hereditary breast cancer is most commonly done in a blood sample. In this test, we sequence the genes related to breast cancer in order to identify variants that are likely causing the disease. If we identify a disease-causing variant in an individual, we then can confirm the diagnosis of hereditary breast cancer, counsel them about their prognosis and future cancer risk, and guide them about risk reduction measures and screening strategies in order to reduce this risk. Next, we provide them with genetic counselling and risk assessment for other family members. A common worry with many patients is whether their children or siblings would also be affected with cancer. This question would be addressed in the genetic counselling session. Suppose a woman has been diagnosed with hereditary breast cancer, then she would have a 50% chance of transmitting the same to her children. If a disease-causing variation is identified in an individual, we can then offer genetic testing to other at-risk family members in order to see if they would be affected or not. This includes testing male family members as they also have a risk of breast cancer along with other cancers. We often come across young women diagnosed with hereditary breast cancer syndrome who are afraid of starting a family or having more children. We counsel them about options such as pre-gestational genetic testing or prenatal genetic testing that can be used to prevent the transmission of the disease to the next generation. At Apollo Proton Cancer Center, we strive to ensure patients with breast cancer understand their genetic risk and receive appropriate genetic testing, treatment, screening, and genetic counseling. Namaste. I'm Dr. Mukta Mahajan, an expert in breast imaging and minimally invasive image-guided procedures at Apollo Proton Cancer Center. Our mission is tailored and staggered breast cancer screening strategies for those at high risk, starting awareness at the age of 18 years and clinical visit by 25 years. From 25, we employ MRI scans with contrast annually. These scans have sensitivities and specificities exceeding 95% and are radiation free. At 30, we integrate mammograms with MR every year, scheduling them six months apart to detect cancers early, reducing the probability of interval cancers. The surveillance strategy is crucial for high-risk women who are young and yet to complete their family, and also for cancer survivors who haven't chosen prophylactic surgeries. We follow NCCN guidelines ensuring screening continues safely until the age of 75 or even beyond depending on the individual risk factors and comorbidities. We have facility to perform 3D mammogram tomosynthesis as well as contrast-enhanced mammography to supplement routine screening mammogram for women with dense breasts who have limitations for breast MRI. 
Our approach includes biennial clinic visits that provides due cognizance to other cancer types that occur in hereditary breast cancer syndromes, such as ovarian, prostate, and pancreatic cancers. Our approach also includes tailored protocols for men with BRCA mutations, starting examinations at 35 years, and sometimes imaging at 50 years. In my practice, open conversations and counseling regarding the choice of tests and their frequencies has shown to enhance compliance to these recurring tests. We are set to employ AI-based risk prediction strategies and personalized screening protocols in clinical practice as the evidence evolves. The goal is to strike balance between detecting cancers early and minimizing unnecessary interventions, ultimately reducing the burden of hereditary breast cancer on affected individuals and their families. Hi, I'm Dr. Manjula Rao, Consultant Breast Oncoplastic Surgeon at Apollo Proton Cancer Center. I'm going to be discussing about the management aspect of hereditary breast cancers today. Now, there are three scenarios that one can break this down into. One, when an individual has a family history of a known hereditary genetic mutation that may cause breast or ovarian cancer like the BRCA gene amongst other genes, but the individual himself or herself has not undergone genetic testing. Two, when an individual is proven to be carrying a known genetic mutation such as BRCA1 or 2. And three, when a patient diagnosed with breast cancer is found to be carrying a known genetic mutation like BRCA amongst other genes. Now, in the first scenario, where an apparently normal individual is known to have a family history of hereditary breast cancer and is known to be carrying a known hereditary genetic mutation like BRCA1 or 2, but has not undergone genetic testing themselves, then what we do is typically take their clinical and family history and we help them understand their risk of developing the disease in the near or distant future. We refer them to the genetic counsellor for further risk assessment and counselling regarding the implications of undergoing genetic testing and we also inform them of their options for risk reduction in case they also test positive for the mutation. In a second scenario where the presenting individual is proven to be carrying a known hereditary genetic mutation, they are then advised certain risk reduction measures which include A. Screening, where the individual undergoes more frequent breast cancer screening. For example, she will be advised to begin screening at an earlier age than the accepted norm of 40 years. Screening is typically started 10 years earlier than the youngest patient in the family who has developed the disease. She will also be advised to undergo a mammogram alternated with an MRI of the breast at six monthly intervals. B. The second method is that of chemoprophylaxis, that is by using medications such as tamoxifen, raloxifene, eczemastain, etc., which have shown to reduce breast cancer occurrence in a woman who may be at a high risk of developing the disease. This is typically considered in women more than or equal to 35 years of age or have finished, completed childbearing. And C, the third method of risk reduction is that of surgical prophylaxis, where a woman can consider having both of her breasts surgically removed with or without reconstruction of the whole breast. Now, in someone with a BRCA mutation, women more than 40 years of age or those who may have completed childbearing may also be advised to undergo surgical remo removal of the ovaries and fallopian tube and certain women with say a BRCA2 mutation, the uterus may be ad advised to be removed as well to reduce her risk of developing ovarian cancer, endometrial cancer, etc. Now in the final scenario where a patient diagnosed with breast cancer is found to have a BRCA mutation, it is important for them to understand that they stand a higher risk of recurrence of the disease after treatment, either locally on the treated site or on the opposite breast or in other parts of the body. This does not preclude them from undergoing breast conservation surgery on the affected side, which means that they do have the choice of conserving their breast. This does not mandate total removal of the breast on both sides. And this also does not mandate complete removal of the unaffected breast. 
But what this calls for is a discussion with the patient regarding their prognosis and the risks of recurrence, what surgical option they would like to opt for if given a choice, and what it would entail for them in terms of screening during follow-ups. Radiation is an essential component of comprehensive breast cancer treatment. Nearly all women who have undergone breast conservation surgery and many women who have undergone mastectomy will need radiation. The, thing, the way to think about it is uh, radiation therapy eliminates cancer cells that are left behind at surgery that in future might cause recurrence of breast cancer. The presence of mutation status in BRCA1 and 2 which are associated with high risk of breast and ovarian cancers often raises concern regarding the adjuvant radiation. However, current evidence suggests that presence of mutational status of BRCA1 and 2 should not be the sole determinant in decision making process regarding radiation therapy for breast cancer patients. Uh, more studies have addressed uh, this issue of having BRCA1 and 2 uh, would increase or make more radiation therapy more riskier for women with breast cancer. Turns out these gene mutations do not make radiation therapy more harmful. Radiation therapy do not increase the side effects or make the chance of cancer coming back higher. BRCA1 and 2 does not seem to be significantly alter the way of radiation therapy affects breast cancer treatment outcomes. So, if a woman having these mutations needs radiation after surgery, it is considered safe. Hi, I am Dr. Prasad Ishwaran. I am a senior consultant in medical oncology at Apollo Proton Cancer Hospital. When we are looking at the BRCA mutations, the uh, major cause of a uh, genetic cause of cancer mutations for breast cancers and ovarian cancers, we have learned a lot about these mutations which cause cancer in the past decade. We do have a lot of information specifically for the BRCA mutation which has this BRCA1 and BRCA2. BRCA1 mutations do have a lot of uh, high risk of developing breast cancers as well as ovarian carcinomas. BRCA2 has a higher incidence of ovarian carcinomas and this can affect both men as well as women. When we are looking at ways and means of preventing breast cancer specifically for this high risk group of patients there are hormonal methods which can be used for preventing or delaying the happening in such high risk group of patients. There are certain medications called tamoxifen, raloxifen, eczemestin and these medications can either delay the onset of cancer or if it happens it can also be used as a treatment as well. Specifically when we are looking at the recent advances in breast cancer management there is a new drug called PARP inhibitors. There are certain medications which can be used specifically for this high group of patients, especially after the surgery, radiation or their primary treatment gets completed. These patients who harbor the mutation can be started on certain medications called Olaparib, which comes under the category of PARP inhibitors. These drugs delay or improve the survival, delay the recurrences and improves the patient's survival. Even in stage 4, metastatic breast cancer, even if the disease had spread from one part of the body to other parts of the body, those patients who have BRCA mutations can be treated with this particular drug and there is a dramatic improvement in the survival of even stage 4 cancer patients. Not just confined only to breast and ovarian carcinomas, the uh, indication had been extended to pancreatic carcinomas as well as in prostate cancers in men. There are certain trials which have shown that BRCA mutations are detected in men cancers as well, for example prostate cancer and when it is detected, drugs can be used to improve the survival. To conclude, when should one consider getting a genetic test? If one or more multiple members in your family have suffered from cancer of any organ, it would be best for you to visit the oncologist clinic for a risk assessment and further discussion. And why is it important to consider genetic counselling and testing? Remember, breast cancer is a disease that when caught early can not only be cured but may also enable less severe treatments. So if one tests positive for a known hereditary genetic mutation, 
appropriate screening and risk reduction protocols may be initiated. As the proverb goes, a stitch in time saves nine.